Today on Try This at Home, we're going to be building something that you can reuse over and over again, but hopefully you'll never have to use in the first place. But you're going to need to do it. And I can prove that it was cheap. So originally when I had filmed this video on making the power bleeder, I suggested using a barbed fitting, a bushing that'll thread into the barbed fitting, and a master cylinder cap that'll fit your master cylinder to attach it to the car. Now after trying to do that and blowing brake fluid all over the place as a result, I no longer will recommend that method. Instead, here's a way that I came up with much better. Go to a winemaking supply store or something like that. I'll get this a little closer so you can see. This is a type of cork stopper, which I guess actually technically it's a rubber stopper. It has a hole through the middle that I have pushed my hose coming from the Blake bleeder through and then clamped it on this side. What I did, I put a piece of brake line up inside of it to seal it so it would swell out. Jammed that up in there and then clamped this so that it can't slide back out. Basically, you just want it to be able to fit so that it's not leaking and will hold in there. So this fits perfectly in my car, my wife's car, my truck, my brother's car, pretty much every master cylinder that I can try, this thing fits. You're also going to need a cheap garden sprayer, one gallon type. That was $9.97. Then you're going to need a gallon of brake fluid. So after having opened the box on your sprayer, you'll have a little jug, which we can set aside for right now. The pump part, which can also be set aside for right now. And then all of the assorted handle assembly. Now, basically what we're going to do, this piece normally would be your spray nozzle. This piece is your um, handle where you can shut it off. We've got a few different pieces and parts and doodads here and there. What we're going to do is take our clear plastic hose, find an end of that, and we're going to shove it over the end of this handle. So I'd recommend putting a hose clamp or something on here just so that it doesn't blow off while you're using it and spray all your brake fluid everywhere. And that is what we're trying to repair here in the long run anyways, isn't it? So reassemble that back to our handle. And then we're going to have to deal with the other side of our hose, oh, basically. It comes down to assembling the other part of the um, sprayer hose. So basically we take their piece of hose and connect it on. So now our hose is connected to the handle and our clear hose is coming out the other side. So this will allow you to um, regulate how much fluid is going through. If you've got all your ble bleeders closed, then you don't need to put any fluid in. Open a bleeder, you can start letting fluid in. And the fact that it's a long enough and a clear hose means you can carry this thing with you to put in a little extra pressure if you need to while you're putting stuff. So, other side of our bleed. Okay, this thing. This through here. And over top of this. Take this whole assembly and attach it to your tank. Tighten that down. Install the actual pump part. There you 
you go. You have yourself a automatic, well, semi-automatic, I guess, pressurized one-man brake bleeder. And it costs under $20. So, thanks for watching. We'll be doing another video soon of some improvements to this, um, as well as how to use it on your vehicle. Thanks for watching. Get this, stick that into the master cylinder, and then use something kind of like this. What I actually used, I can't find anymore, but it's like a squeeze vice grip quick clamp type thing. You can pick them up at Harbor Freight for around three or four bucks, and the cork should only cost you around the same, three or four bucks, so it ends up costing about the same as those little brass fittings that I would have recommended, but this way works so much better and makes it so much more of a universal device. So I would highly recommend doing it this way.